Chapter 71 Hating to be somebody else's puppet you are listening at NovelFull.audio Axel looked at him in the eyes and he felt the urge to make this man his, he kissed him wildly and said against his lips. You are mine Kev, I won't let anyone else have you. Kevin saw that Axel's eyes were starting to get dangerously darker and darker so he pulled away from him and told him to try to calm his man who seemed to be always so horny. Let's open the rest of the boxes and then we'll decide what to do next. Axel looked frustrated but he nodded, it was the best distraction Kevin could have found otherwise he would have started again where he left off in the boss room. He leaned forward to destroy the lock on the high-grade box and waited patiently for Kevin to tell him what was inside. High-grade box. 10 500 gold coins. Purify potion high-grade times 10. Allows you to purify your body of all harmful substances, effective against poisons of maximum level 5. Mind protection potion high-grade times 10. Allows you to protect your mind against all mental attacks, duration 2 hours. Kevin frowned and Axel guessed immediately what he was thinking, so he said. You two think it can't be a coincidence, this system always gives us what we need the most. Kevin nodded, the purify potion was surely for Axel, to protect him while they would be looting the purple dungeon, as everything was dead around it, there must be something in the air that was toxic. And the mind protection potion was for him to protect his mind against this unknown force that hypnotized him earlier. He said to Axel. Yes it's been going through my mind for a while, the fact that my soul has transmigrated into your world in the body of a mage and that system that, like you just said, always gives us what we need the most, it can't be a coincidence. If we add to that the mark on my chest, the one who sent me here must want to make me as powerful as possible to accomplish something and if there is something that I really hate it's to be somebody else's puppet. Kevin sighed helplessly and said to Axel. It doesn't matter though, we can't change that right now, so let's keep enjoying the system and its rewards, what do you say? Axel nodded. You're right. Only by becoming powerful we can protect ourselves, and the system is our best ally at the moment. Kevin opened the last box and smiled when he saw what was inside. Medium grade box. 5000 gold coins. Medium grade scabbard. Plus 30 agility points, plus 20 stamina points. Kevin looked at Axel and said. I'll keep it, it'll be to put on the short sword you just gave me. So, what do we do now? Axel told him what seemed the best to him. We can go to Tony's first, it should be faster than the last time, and then after that, I think we should invite Alan and Eric to come to dinner with us, sooner we will tell them about you, the better and the easier it will be for everyone. Kevin nodded. That's fine with me. Do you think they'll agree to come and loot the dungeon with us tomorrow? Axel honestly told him what he was thinking. The one we will have to convince is Alan, he doesn't look like that but he's very protective of Eric and he will never put his life in danger. Kevin nodded. It's going to be a lot for them to digest all at once. It would be a shame to miss this opportunity, but they will have the last word for this one, we can't force them anyway. Axel agreed with him on this point, and as Kevin had just approved his plan, he slowly began to undress to see how Kevin would react this time. When Kevin saw that Axel was undressing slowly intentionally to provoke him, he then preferred to turn around or else they would never leave the wildlands. Axel was a little disappointed by Kevin's reaction but he vowed to make him regret it when they would be alone at home, he hadn't forgotten anything of their conversation and he was counting on winning his man tonight. He then shapeshifted into a wolf and when Kevin felt his muzzle push his shoulder, he finally turned and climbed onto his back, he whispered in his ear. Be patient Axel. We will have all the time we want tonight. Right after Kevin whispered this to him, Axel felt relieved and impatient, he sped at lightning speed through the wildlands and then headed for Dawn City to lead them to Tony's shop. The sooner they would complete the deal, the sooner they could get home. What he had completely forgotten was that he was the one to suggest inviting Alan and Eric to dinner. Once in the city, they headed straight to Tony's shop and since it was Saturday, Tony wasn't there and they were greeted by the same employee as last time, the one Kevin would have already put in his place if Axel hadn't stopped him. 
Axel politely asked him if he could go get Tony and the young man immediately left to go tell his boss that Axel and Kevin were there. Kevin found his behavior strange so he asked Axel. It's weird the last time I could feel animosity and jealousy coming from him, so why today does he look so welcoming? Axel chuckled and said to him. I think Tony has praised your merits, all his employees really like him because he pays them very well and takes good care of them, it has always had an excellent atmosphere here, like a family one, that's why I like to come here too. So if he has told them that you got him out of trouble, they're all going to treat you differently now. Kevin scratched the back of his head, he felt a little embarrassed, he didn't help him to get any kind of reward, but at least that employee wouldn't cause him any more problem. Kevin then said to Axel. I'll go and see if I can find any good axes for Eric, wait for me, I won't be long. Axel nodded he trusted Kevin completely to pick the axes that would best suit Eric, so he said. Look for yourself too, maybe there would be a better short sword. Kevin wouldn't have thought of it as he always preferred to fight with daggers but he had realized that a pair of short swords might not be a luxury in this world, especially with what they would have probably to face tomorrow. He nodded to Axel to let him know that he would look for it, and he walked in the direction where the weapons were located. Shortly after Kevin left, Tony arrived and he greeted Axel warmly, he immediately asked him where Kevin had gone and Axel told him that he was just looking at the weapons and should be back soon. Tony then asked him. Did you come to buy weapons or did you come because you looted a dungeon again? Axel laughed and said. Actually we came for both, we need to find weapons for a friend of mine, the one I have become the tutor of, and otherwise we just looted a dungeon full of summoned creatures. Axel handed him his magic bag and Tony looked inside with a greed glint in his eyes that was too hard to hide. It wasn't his fault though, because every time Axel came in those few days it was the jackpot. His eyes widened in surprise and he said to Axel. Shit Axel, if I'm not mistaken these are the bodies of three elite knight wizards Neven. A warrior wizard, wow. Axel nodded and said. I have also collected all the armor and weapons and the skeleton bones, although I'm not sure if you can use them. Tony then said promptly. No matter what you find in a dungeon, always take everything, I'll take care of sorting it out for you. The bones of the skeletons summoned by these wizards are used to create dagger handles, or axe handles, weapons made from these bones are always minimum of medium grade so don't worry these bones are valuable. Tony looked inside the magic bag again and ended up saying to Axel. One H should be enough for me to give you an estimate, are you okay with that? Kevin who had just returned with two axes, a short sword, a scabbard and some leather straps said to him. It's perfect Tony, how are you? Tony answered him warmly and then he asked him surprised. Do you want to buy all this? Kevin nodded and said. Yes I would like to buy all of this and since we're going to be here for an hour, do you have big sheets of paper and colored pencils on top of that? Chapter 72 Watching you draw you are listening at novelfull.audio Tony then looked at his employee and said. Ellis, can you go and get the sheets of paper that we use in the office, as well as the colored pencils for Kevin please? Ellis nodded and left immediately, and Axel curiously asked to Kevin. What are you going to do with all this? Kevin winked at him and said. I am going to start your training on the blood system of the human body, I haven't forgotten what I promised you. I will teach you my technique but not before you know by heart the circulation of blood in the human body. Axel's smile widened and he said excitedly. Really? You're really gonna do this now? Kevin nodded. One hour is more than enough for me to be able to draw you the diagrams I want you to learn. Tony didn't know what they were talking about but Axel looked delighted, he coughed to get their attention. Those two axes and this short sword are worth a lot of money, so let me offer you the scabbard and the leather straps. Do you want me to deduct them from what I'm going to give you or do you want to pay for it now? He showed them the magic bag that Axel had just given him and there was no doubt that what was inside was worth a lot more than the weapons. Kevin looked at Axel who nodded to let him know to choose, so he said to Tony. 
you can deduct them from what you're going to give us, by the way, you can also deduct the sheets of paper and the colored pencils I need. We will wait for you at the training ground like the last time, okay? Tony immediately accepted, it was easier that way. He told them that he was going to estimate their fines right away and that they shouldn't worry and make themselves at home. They waited for Ellis to come back with everything Kevin needed to be able to draw and they both set off for the training ground after putting everything in a magic bag. Once alone, Axel asked him curiously. What did you find? Kevin had a bright smile in his face as he said to him. I found a high grade and a medium grade axe. The high grade one was the only one though, but I wouldn't have taken it if its form couldn't have suited Eric, luckily it's exactly how I wanted it to be. Kevin took out the three weapons, and showed him the high grade axe, it was the one of the warrior orc he had killed two days ago. Axel remembered what Kevin had told to Eric, that he needed an axe with a double blade separated in the middle by a sharp point and a not too long handle to be more handy, and Axel had to admit that this axe absolutely met all these criteria. He asked him again. And for the rest you chose them for their stats. Kevin nodded. Tony has no shortage of medium grade weapons, I chose the second axe because it had excellent stats and because its double blades were very large and could also serve as a shield. As for the short sword, I obviously chose it for its stats, if we were in my world without these wonderful stats, I would have just picked up the one that was the closest to me. Any short swords are the same to me. Axel didn't doubt his words, he had already showed him that he was capable to fight with a lot of different weapons. He finally asked him too curious to restrain himself. Tell me their stats please, you are killing me with the suspense. Kevin laughed heartily and told him everything. For the high grade axe it has 200 strength points, 70 agility points and 30 stamina points. The medium grade axe has 90 strength points and 60 agility points, and the medium short sword has 70 strength points, 70 agility points and 40 stamina points. Axel hissed in admiration, they were really very good weapons indeed, he then asked him even if he could already guess the answer. I suppose that the scabbard also have stats. Kevin just nodded so Axel asked him again. Are you going to make double scabbards to put the weapons on the back like the one you have made for me? Kevin came to put his arms around his neck and he said to him. If you already know the answer why do you ask the question? Axel didn't have time to answer that Kevin was already crushing his lips against his in a passionate kiss. When he pulled away from Axel he said. I'll make the double scabbards when we get home, this one is just a low grade and it has 10 agility points and 5 stamina points but it's still better than nothing. If you want you can practice while I draw my diagrams. Axel shook his head and said. I'd rather stay with you, I want to watch you draw babe. Axel led him to the table where there were the weapons and he put them all to the side to give him as much room as possible to make his diagrams. Kevin took the sheets of paper and colored pencils out of his magic bag and began to draw expertly. It was not the first time he had made this kind of diagram so he drew them quickly but with an extreme precision. Fortunately, Ellis had brought him a lot of sheets of paper because he wanted to make different kinds of diagrams. One which would represent the human body with the direction of the blood flow, and others more detailed on certain parts of the body where thanks to the pressure point one could impair this circulation. Axel was once again blown away by Kevin's talent, his drawings were extremely precise and it would be easy to study thanks to them. Plus, as Kevin was focused on what he was doing he hadn't realized that he was leaning forward to draw and that this position was damn sexy. He had such a wonderful view of his muscular little ass. Dot he had to use all his willpower not to grab his buttocks and stroke them to his heart's content. He held back because he was sure that Kevin wouldn't appreciate being disturbed while he was drawing and he didn't want to ruin his chances for tonight. Only, a few minutes later Kevin kicked him in the shins and told him without stopping drawing. Damn Axel, how do you want me to stay focused on what I'm doing when you look at me like that? Chapter 73 We have a visitor you are listening at novelfull.audio. He added because he really wanted to finish his diagrams. Axel, please go to do something else and let me finish this, okay? Axel, who had been caught eyeing his ass, 
had no choice but to let go of this perfect sight, and he decided to go train to calm his nerves. It was the only thing that could help him fight the sexual frustration he felt every time he was around Kevin, he didn't know why he was so obsessed with him, that was the first time he felt this way for someone. Before joining the Sun sect he had made love to women and men but it was always for one night, and he had never been fully satisfied, no one had been able to catch his attention. When he was 18 and went to the Sun sect, he had concentrated all his energy on his training and he had realized that he enjoyed fighting with a sword far more than hanging out with someone. Well, that was true until he saw Kevin training during the annual recruitment of the Sun sect, he had been completely captivated by his movements and after these few days spent together he really felt like he had found his soulmate. He decided to take Kevin's advice and try to speed up his executing movements of his sword technique. He took a training sword and chose to train without his stats increased by his own swords, if he wanted to progress he had to progress at the base of his technique. Because if he trained directly with his swords and their stats, he wouldn't know if he had made any progress. When Tony arrived at the training ground he was once again blown away by Axel's technique which was more than perfect for him, and Kevin was still drawing. He decided to approach Kevin first and looked at the diagrams Kevin had made, they looked like diagrams found in books on human anatomy, they were superbly well drawn. Tony exclaimed. Wow. Kevin what a talent, it's breathtaking. Kevin looked up and decided to stop there for the moment, he scratched the back of his head embarrassed by the compliment. It's not like that Tony. Actually, it's not the first time I've drawn them so it's easier to do them for me now. Have you finished estimating our fines? Tony chuckled and thought that decidedly Kevin was too humble, he then said handing him a piece of paper. Here. These are my estimates, you were very lucky, in each of the elite knight wizards there was a small magic crystal of medium grade and in the body of the warrior wizard there was a high grade one of small size too. Axel, who had finally stopped and had just joined them, quickly looked at the paper Kevin was holding in his hand and he smirked very satisfied. Estimate. Skeleton bones equals 32,000 gold coins. Armors equals 73,000 gold coins. Weapons equals 50,000 gold coins. Elite knight wizards bodies equals 30,000 gold coins. Warrior wizards body equals 25,000 gold coins. Magical crystal, medium grade, small size equals 5,000 times 3 is equal to 15,000 gold coins. Magical crystal, high grade, small size equals 50,000 gold coins. Two axes plus one short sword equals 65,000 gold coins total value equals 275,000. 65,000 is equal to 210,000 gold coins. Kevin who had seen Axel smile asked Tony. Why didn't you count the sheets of paper and the colored pencils? Tony laughed and said. I don't sell that kind of items Kevin, it was personal stuff, I'm happy to offer it to you. Tony then slapped his forehead and exclaimed. I almost forgot, there were three magic bags left in the armor piles. Tony then took out of his own magic bag three more bags and Axel took two of them at random and he said to him. Keep this one for you and you have no right to refuse. Tony could have kept them without telling them, it was probably from the dead knights in the dungeon boss room when he had scooped everything up before the dungeon closed, honestly he wouldn't have thought of that. Kevin seemed satisfied and grateful for what he had just done so everything was for the best. Axel had already noticed that Kevin didn't mind giving but that he was really uncomfortable if he felt indebted. Tony agreed and thanked them warmly, seeing that he might upset them if he ever refused. They talked together a little bit more and, after putting back their things in their magic bag and once the transaction was completed, they left Dawn City to go back to their pavilion. As they were about to get to their home, Axel abruptly stopped and frowned, Kevin who was in his arms looked at him surprised and asked him curious as to what could possibly make him react this way. What's the matter? Why did you suddenly stop? Axel reluctantly put Kevin back on the ground and said. We're not alone. We have a visitor and judging by her smell, she's been here for a while already, what a pain this girl. Kevin understood immediately and asked him just for confirmation. 
Irina. Axel nodded and Kevin thought that this girl was really shameless, in fact he had prepared to face her sooner than that, and he wondered what had been holding her back for so long. He sighed helplessly and said to Axel. Let's go, she's going to have to face the reality, the sooner she understands the better it will be for us. Axel really hoped it would be that easy but given Irina's character he doubted it. He didn't understand anything about this girl, he had already rejected her advances countless times but that didn't stop her from starting to harass him again. He even had the impression that the more he pushed her away and the more she was determined to seduce him. She had even gone so far as to circulate a false rumor last year that they were already engaged and that he would marry her as soon as she would have finished her apprenticeship with the Sun sect. Of course he had denied the rumor but the damage was done, and some continued to associate them together as if they were a real couple. That's why he had warned Kevin about what he might hear, he didn't want there to be any misunderstanding between them. It was time to put Irina back in her place once and for all, and well, for the consequences that might entail, he was ready to take full responsibility. Chapter 74 The final blow you are listening at novel full audio. Irina came from a powerful family of mages who were part of the nobility and resided in the capital, they were highly respected and had a lot of influence. Fortunately, no one could force someone to marry and thanks to Kevin's exceptional potential no one would dare to harm him otherwise it would be the entire Sun sect that they would alienate and even the nobles dared not offend the sects, especially the Sun sect. Kevin was right when he described Irina and said that she didn't seem very talented, because unlike her two older brothers, she had been refused at the capital's academy for lack of talent, and her parents had therefore placed her inside the Sun sect, which was the most famous sect in the continent. Kevin then asked him seeing that he was still not moving. Something wrong. Axel, who had been carried away by the threat of his thoughts pulls himself together and told him the truth, he told him absolutely everything he knew about Irina and her family. He also told him about the rumor she had circulated about them last year and Kevin exclaimed furious. That girl is so shameless. Kevin then said to him putting his arms around his neck again. Axel, carry me in your arms again, I need to mark my territory, this girl won't bother you anymore believe me. Axel chuckled and immediately picked him up in his arms obeying his man's orders. Kevin then had an idea that would probably drive her mad with jealousy but that was the point after all. He untied Axel's long black hair and made it look messy, he then kissed Axel and bit his lips to make them look swollen and finally he asked Axel to give him a conspicuous hickey on his neck. Axel thought that Irina's intrusion had some good points in the end, and of course he didn't just give him a hickey. After changing his position in his arms and having him put his legs on either side of his waist, he slammed him against the nearest tree trunk and devoured his neck, pressing his body against his which awakened a certain part of his anatomy. Kevin tried to struggle but Axel was too strong for him and he was really having a blast, his whole neck would soon be covered with hickeys, he should have known not to provoke Axel who was already horny enough like that. When Axel was satisfied with his job, he kissed Kevin breathlessly and he finally whispered in his ear. Let me handle this with her and wait inside the pavilion, it won't take me too long, I promise. Kevin who knew exactly what was going on in Axel's head replied with a smirk, laughing. Certainly not. I'll let you take care of her, but I'll go get Alan and Eric instead. Axel looked at him with pitiful eyes but it was also important to talk to Alan and Eric so he kissed him tenderly this time and said to appease him. Don't worry, I'll give myself to you later, okay? Axel's face lit up instantly and he said. Do whatever you want then, and you're right. Let's just keep doing what we planned. Dot but before that, let her see who I really belong to. Kevin replied with a glint in his eyes that would have frightened to death this poor Irina if she had seen it. With pleasure. Axel chose to keep Kevin in this position, after all if he wanted to mark his territory, there couldn't be a more explicit position than this one. It was just jubilant to imagine what Irina would look like when she would see them. He started kissing Kevin passionately again just before he stepped out of the forest, and he took the opportunity to stroke his buttocks, earning him a murderous glare from Kevin. Axel understood his message, 
that kind of move could be done only in private, or else he would have to endure the wrath of his man. But as Irina had just seen them in this very compromising position anyway, he stopped kissing and caressing Kevin and he put him back gently on the ground. Axel played his role to perfection and seemed surprised to see her, he cleared his throat pretending to be embarrassed. Irina, what are you doing here? Irina was not really good at hiding her emotions and especially the hatred and jealousy she felt for Kevin. But she said, after taking the time to regain her composure after this shocking scene which she had just witnessed. I have just returned from the capital and I found out that you live here now, I just wanted to stop by and see if you were comfortable and if you didn't need anything. Axel replied without hesitation and with a grin in his face. Thank you, but we don't need anything, we have already all what we need. Tough, thought Kevin, it must have been a huge blow to Irina. Irina repeated somewhat surprised. We. Axel's smile widened and he put his arm around Kevin's shoulders and told her. Ha, huh, it's true that you left for the capital on Tuesday, I just remembered that Douglas had talked to me about that, he complained that someone was missing to test the mages, he was quite pissed off. Irina blushed, she was furious, the message was very clear, he was taking her for an irresponsible girl, and all of that because of this Douglas. She didn't know why but he had never liked her anyway, she said to Axel looking for a plausible excuse. My parents ordered me to go back to the capital, it's not my fault. They wanted me to attend a very important event at the palace. Of course that was completely fake, she had been annoying her parents for weeks to find an excuse to escape this stupid chore of testing the new mages, and with the way Axel was looking at her, she could tell that he wasn't fooled. Axel then told her, choosing to not say anything about this obvious lie. If you had stayed you would have known that me and Kevin are now in a relationship and that we are living here together. Irina seemed to have been struck by lightning, she was totally petrified. She thought that with Kevin it was just curiosity, after all he was a man, how could Axel prefer a man to her? Kevin felt an intention to kill coming from this Irina and he smiled at so much naivety. This girl had absolutely no idea who she was going to mess with and he had heard enough of her nonsense like that. He then told Axel to avoid doing something he might regret later. I'll go get Alan and Eric and come back. Irina, who after this revelation had remained speechless, finally recovered her voice and said to him, restraining with great difficulty her desire to teach this kid a lesson, no but who he thought he was. You shouldn't disturb your seniors when they are at rest, Alan has not yet chosen the student who will have the privilege of having him as his tutor, and the list is quite long of those who want to be tutored by him. Kevin looked at her wondering if she was on that list, and just thinking about it made him smile even more, because what he was about to say would surely give her the final blow. Ha ah, yes, as Axel just told you, since you weren't there you don't know that yet, but Alan made an exceptional waiver request to be able to be my tutor, he should have the answer soon. Irina was confused again. An exceptional waiver request to be able to be your tutor, but it's impossible, the student must at least be in his or her fourth year to be able to have a tutor. A voice familiar then said. Or you have to have an exceptional talent to be able to have a tutor, and Kevin is the first mage recruited by the Sun sect to have an affinity with three elements and whose main element is the lightning one, so it makes him doubly exceptional. Kevin's smile widened. Decidedly Alan always appeared at the right time and Eric was with him that was perfect, he said to them warmly. Hey guys, I was just going to come and get you, do you want to dinner with us tonight, I'm the one cooking. Eric was delighted, he was too curious about Kevin's abilities and he really wanted to have a nice chat with him, so he looked at Alan to make sure he was okay with it, and when he saw him nodded he said to Kevin excited. Sure, but let me help you then. Kevin agreed happily and Eric winked at Axel before taking Kevin by the shoulders to lead him inside the pavilion and away from this witch. Chapter 75 Threat You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. Once inside, Kevin thanked him warmly and led him into the kitchen, he asked him curious. Eric, what brought you both here? Eric laughed and said. Let me tell you, well, I had just finished my training and Alan had come to get me. 
We were walking home quietly when he suddenly stopped and he told me that there was a problem with the spiritual energy around us, he asked me to follow him and told me that someone was surely preparing for a fight and that we should probably intervene to stop him. Eric smiled at him and said. Guess who was about to launch an attack on whom, as if Axel would have let you getting hurt. They both laughed and when they calmed down, Eric exclaimed. What a pain this girl seriously, did you know that she had tried to seduce Alan before to chase after Axel, that girl was really annoying when I was trying to win the heart of my Alan. Kevin said to him sincerely. I didn't know and I really sympathize. Otherwise, it's really good that both of you came, we really wanted to invite you with Axel. Eric then asked him not trying to hide his excitement. Have you decided to tell us your secret? Kevin knew that with this combat intelligence skill, Eric could only be a very smart, multi-dot-talented person so he decided to be honest with him. Um, that would have been hard to hide it from you anyway, one day or another we would have told you. So, we decided to tell you as soon as possible, to avoid any misunderstanding between us. Eric smiled at him and said. You've done well, whatever it is, Axel has been our friend for a long time so don't worry too much it won't affect our relationship. Kevin's smile widened and he said in a playful tone. Well, just remember what you just said when we will tell you about it. Eric laughed, but after that he nodded looking at him seriously, and Kevin was a little curious so he asked him. What do you think it is? Eric looked at him seriously and then Kevin saw in his eyes what he was looking for, there were no more doubt for him, with a hard training Eric would be able to evolve his combat intelligence skill into the warrior spirit skill. You won't blame me if I say what I think. Kevin shook his head and encouraged him to continue, Eric then said to him. Actually, I have no idea, all I know is that your knowledge of fighting techniques and weapons far exceeds that of our instructors, and that knowledge doesn't really match up with someone who is just 18. Alan told me not to bother with it and that when you will trust us enough you will tell us the truth, but we didn't expect it to be that fast. Is it because of our relationship with Axel? Kevin nodded and said with a smile. Axel is an honest person and it would have not him to keep the truth from you. Eric nodded, he was glad that whatever Kevin was hiding from them, he cared enough about Axel to take his feelings into consideration, he appreciated him even more. Something else was disturbing him though, so he said. Kevin, you know, same if Axel if stronger than you, you shouldn't let him do that to you. Kevin looked at him visibly he didn't understand what he was referring to so he cleared his throat before telling him a little embarrassed. You know, all the hickeys on your neck, at least tell him to do them in places that aren't so eyes catching. Kevin didn't know if he should laugh or cry but he chose to laugh and he explained to him what had happened and why he did those hickeys on him. While Kevin and Eric were having a great time together preparing dinner, Axel and Alan tried to calm a completely hysterical Irina and their conversation ended in threat from Irina who swore to make them pay for this humiliation. And even if the boys didn't understand why they had humiliated her, for Irina it was very clear. Axel, whom she had diligently pursued, had preferred to choose a man rather than her, and Alan who could have chosen her to be her tutor and benefiting from the status of her family, had preferred to become the tutor of this same boy who didn't even have a family to support him. She would make them all pay for it, they really had no idea how powerful and long dot arm her family was. After that, she stormed off and left behind Alan and Axel who were both puzzled because for them they had done nothing to deserve such a threat. Well, Axel had already guessed it would surely end like this, especially with the act he had put together with Kevin, but he couldn't understand why Alan had been put in the same boat as them. They both agreed to keep an eye on her and then returned to find their men who seemed to get along perfectly well. Kevin with Eric's help had cooked simple but tasty dishes and the good smell of cooking instantly made the boys forget the bad time they had just spent with Irina. As they ate, Alan asked Kevin how his first spell class went and Kevin proudly showed him the blade and shield he had created this morning. Everyone was speechless, but Kevin was too excited to pay attention to their heads, and he kept going and showed them how he was able to create three blades at the same time and control them perfectly. 
Axel and Eric were speechless because they had never seen this kind of spell before, and Kevin after only a morning had mastered it perfectly and it seemed to be very easy for him. Meanwhile, Alan was thinking exactly the same as the other two, except that he knew very well that all mages could create their own spell. It was just that normally new mages would rather copy existing spells than create new ones. To have been able to shape the spiritual energy into a blade, that could only meant that Kevin was very familiar with this kind of weapon. But what really had surprised him was that he could also determine the amount of spiritual energy Kevin had concentrated in his blades. And that, if he ever managed to introduce particles of an element into them, this spell would undoubtedly be a spell level 2 and maybe even a spell level 3. Plus, his speed of execution for shaping the energy spiritual to create these blades was quite remarkable. Alan then exclaimed. Kevin this is amazing, you can already concentrate and control such an amount of spiritual energy. He then asked him. Who is your teacher? Kevin dissipated the spiritual energy and returned to the table happy to have received Alan's praise. His name is Julian. Alan sighed in relief and said. I'm glad the Sun sect leaders listened to me, I was the one who recommended these two teachers to them for you. Alan then explained to him. When I went to ask them to be your tutor they told me that they had to think about it, and before leaving they asked me who would be better to teach you, they showed me a list and I was honest with them. Ian is not only a good friend, he is a potions genius, as for Julian he was also my spell teacher and he is really great, you are in good hands with them. Kevin was a little surprised to know that it was Alan who had recommended these two teachers, but he really appreciated both of them so that was perfect for him. Then, he asked him curiously. Can you tell me more about the introduction of the particles inside a spell, when will I be able to see the particles without going into meditation? Alan laughed and told him. Not right away, be patient Kevin, these things take time, and you will be able to see the particles of the elements and gather them together when your soul force would be around 1000 points, not before, it's the time for you to become familiar enough with the spiritual energy around us. When he saw that Kevin seemed confused he said to him. For the moment, you can feel the spiritual energy which surrounds us but you have to be extremely focused to feel it, right? Kevin just nodded so Alan continued, Axel and Eric was also very captivated by this lesson because they were completely clueless about this kind of thing. When you will be able to feel the spiritual energy around us without thinking about it you will only be one step away from seeing the particles of the elements without having to go into meditation. Chapter 76 You said, Secrets. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Alan added for him to get it right. Of course, even if you don't go into meditation, you have to be extremely focused to be able to see them. It takes a lot of practice to create a spell, because right now you are only using the spiritual energy around us. Then you will learn how to introduce the particles inside your spells, and finally the last step is to be able to directly introduce the particles of an element into the spiritual energy that you will use to create your spells. Alan got up in turn and showed him the different steps, one by one. First he created a milky white ball of spiritual energy the size of a tennis ball, then he introduced particles of fire into it and the ball turned a bright red. Then he dissipated his spell and started again but this time the fireball was created in just a few seconds. Kevin had just understood the main steps to create a spell, their teacher only showed them the first and second step but not the ultimate goal like Alan had just did. Once he would be able to gather the element particles along with the spiritual energy, he would be able to create all kinds of spells besides the ones that he could copy, it was just so cool. But what Alan had told him made him realize something very important, namely that the items that could increase his soul force points didn't count in order to be able to see the particles, only his own points counted for that. Alan sat down and saw with satisfaction that Kevin had understood what he had just shown him. After that the studious vibe turned into a playful one and they continued to eat while telling Kevin anecdotes about the life here at the Sun Sect. When they had finished eating and cleaning the dishes, they all found themselves in the living room and the time for confession had arrived. Axel began. We'll tell you everything, but first you have to know that you need to be open. 
minded and that we trusted you enough to tell you Kevin's secrets. Alan too curious to hold back. You said, secrets. Axel coughed embarrassed and confessed to them. There are several yes. Kevin then took his hand and intertwined his fingers with his, he said to him. Let me explain everything to them okay. Axel looked at him and Kevin seemed determinate to tell them all by himself, it was his story after all, so he nodded and then Kevin told them that his soul had transmigrated into this body, he explained to them where he came from and who he really was. He gave them the same information as Axel and Eric then exclaimed with resentment. Fuck Axel, no wonder he has beaten me up, and that explains why you're so knowledgeable when it comes to fighting techniques and weapons. Alan nodded and still asked very curiously. What are your other secrets? Kevin looked at Axel who squeezed his hand to give him courage, so Kevin continued to explain to them what had happened with the book he had inherited, and he explained to them what the system was all about. Then, he was bombarded with questions by Alan and Eric, and so, Kevin decided to make appear and disappear one magical crystal high grade from his inventory. Alan knew very well the worth of it, actually, it was the dream of all mages to get a magical crystal high grade, same if it was a small size one. Because the particles that gather around it when you meditate are ten times more numerous than with the one the sun sect used for the pavilions. Alan knew very well that without the help of the system he couldn't have bought it in Dawn City, it was extremely rare, only in the capital during auctions you could buy some. After that, Kevin even made a fireball appear in his hand, Eric and Alan was really shocked because the fire element wasn't an element he had an affinity with when Alan had tested him, so at the end they could only believe him. Eric exclaimed. This is absolutely insane. He looked at Alan but Alan had started to frown again, so he asked him curious to know why his man looked troubled. What is it my love, something is troubling you. Alan didn't answer him, he would know soon enough, he looked at Axel and Kevin in turn then he stopped on Axel and he said to him. You did say, secrets. You already knew that we would accept the fact that his soul has transmigrated in our world, and it was rather easy to show us that his system does exist. So what's the problem Axel? What are you still hiding from us? Axel turned to Kevin and said. It's better if you show them, otherwise this time I'm afraid that they won't believe us. Kevin just nodded and got up and as he took off his sweater, T-dot shirt, and breastplate, which he now kept always on him, Axel was watching his friend's reaction and he wasn't surprised to see their shocked expression when they finally saw the mark on Kevin's chest. Alan had turned pale and Eric, even if he already knew the answer, asked all the same. Is that the mark of the royal family? Alan sighed and then said to him. It was the mark of the royal family seventeen years ago, you forgot what happened. Kevin who was getting dressed was stopped in his tracks by this sentence, he asked Alan after he finished dressing up. What happened seventeen years ago? Alan looked at him surprised and then he looked at Axel with a disapproving expression. Didn't you tell him? Kevin also looked at Axel wondering if he had hidden something from him and Axel immediately said to him. Don't look at me like that, I told you everything I knew. Alan, I'm not like you, I don't come from an important family, I have grown up in an orphanage don't you remember? And I've never been interested in royalty or nobles, I really don't know what happened 17 years ago, but I guess that's probably why Kevin ended up in an orphanage, isn't it? Alan ran a hand over his face and exclaimed. Damn it. It surprised everyone including Eric who then came to put his arm around his shoulders and he asked him in a gentle tone. You tell them or do you want me to tell them? Alan finally rose his head and said more for himself than for the others. This mark explains a lot of things. He then looked at Eric and said to him. Thanks sweetheart, but I will tell them, I know probably more than you about it. Eric nodded and Alan then apologized for his behavior and began to explain to them what had happened. Seventeen years ago the king was assassinated and his younger brother became the new king. I hate my father but he, with the rest of my family, supported the former king, your father, well, I mean the father of. You understand, don't you? Kevin nodded and waited patiently for Alan to explain further but seeing that he was silent he asked him. 
why was he murdered? Do you know who is behind all of this? And you spoke of the king but not of the queen, what has happened to her? Alan realized that he had stopped there in his explanation so he apologized again and continued. My family thinks it's your uncle who. Can I just pretend that you really are him because it really disturbs me? Kevin nodded again, he could understand that it must be disturbing. When Alan saw that Kevin was agreed he sighed in relief and continued where he had left off. According to them it would have been your uncle who had murdered your father, on the one hand because your father wanted to stop this war against the demons and find common ground with them. And on the other hand because he wanted to steal something from him that was only passed on to the new king and therefore the heir of this mark, apparently it was an extremely powerful thing but he never found it. Kevin immediately thought of the book the former Kevin had received for his birthday, because that was what he would have done if he was the king. If he was ever reduced to abandoning his own son, he would give him every possible chance to become powerful enough to protect himself from those who had forced him to this extremity. Alan then said to him. This mark that appeared on your chest is unique, and only appears on one person per generation, your father was the former bearer of this mark, but it could have appeared on anyone. This mark isn't an inheritance, only the most powerful mage can receive it. So, no matter what you think about it, this mark makes you the new king. Chapter 77 Are you interested? You are listening at NovelFull.audio What the hell, thought Kevin, he shook his head, and said to Alan in a non-negotiable tone. I'm absolutely not interested in this kind of stuff, and anyway, at the moment, I'm way too weak to survive if this uncle ever finds out, right? Alan nodded, Kevin was right, his uncle will kill him without hesitation, and he couldn't force him to embrace his destiny. But if there was one thing his family had instilled deep inside of him, it was to protect the bearer of that mark at any cost. He suddenly remembered what Kevin had just asked him and so he told him. Your mother is still alive, your uncle is holding her prisoner in a tower near the royal palace in the capital. Your mother is the most powerful mage in the whole continent and he uses her as cannon fodder to protect the border that separates us from the demon's territory. It seems that he has found some chains that can prevent your mother from using her powers, but according to my cousin, she would willingly agree to fight at the border to avoid too many human losses. Kevin didn't understand everything so he asked him. Is the capital far from the border with the demons? Alan looked at him puzzled but remembered in time that he came from another world where magic didn't exist, he said to him. Your mother is sent over there by a teleportation portal, that kind of magic can only be learnt at the academy of the capital so don't ask me to explain it to you. Eric then said to Kevin. The border with the demon's territory is really very far from the capital, even by using the giant birds it would take several weeks to get there. Kevin asked again. Why did my mom never try to escape if she's that powerful? Alan then told him. Because he's holding back her younger sister and if she tries anything, her sister will be executed immediately. Kevin nodded, it made sense if it was to protect her younger sister. Then Kevin asked him, he was just curious about his parents. Was my father a mage too? Alan chuckled and said to him. Your father was even more powerful than your mother, and he was the last mage who possessed an affinity with three elements, I will let you guess which element was his main element. Kevin replied without having to think. Lightning. Alan just said to him. Bingo. Eric took Alan's chin and turned his head towards him to get his attention. Earlier, you said that this mark explained a lot of things, what did you mean by that? Alan put a hand behind his neck and kissed him tenderly, he said to him. This mark only appears on the most powerful mage, so that mainly explains why he has an affinity with three elements and why he is also good at controlling spiritual energy. His soul force reserve is quite low but after all he had never used it before, and it's very easy to increase. The fact that his parents are exceptional mages, surely helped him to get it though. When he saw that Eric was satisfied with his answer, he turned again to Axel and Kevin and asked them. Anything else? Axel then said to him seriously. It's over, no more secrets I promise, and I would like to know how do you feel about all of that. 
is that going to create an embarrassment between us? Eric then said to him. For me that doesn't change anything, in fact, I find it downright cool. He then looked at Kevin and said. You will have to hide this mark all the time, but I guess you already know that, right? Kevin nodded. I know how to take care of myself. Although, I admit that having a boyfriend and friends is completely new to me, and the more people will know about me, the more I will be in danger, but I'm willing to take this risk as Axel trusts you guys. Axel then looked at Alan and asked him. What about you Alan? Alan then said something he really hadn't expected. It changes a lot of things for me. Even Eric looked at him surprised, so Alan said quickly. I was raised in a family of fighters, you all seem to forget it sometimes. My family always fought to protect at all cost the bearer of the pentagram mark and I know from my cousin that my father and my older brother continue to protect your mother as much as they can. My father fought alongside your father, and my grandfather alongside the former bearer of the pentagram mark. All this to tell you that I had already planned to become your tutor, but now, knowing that you are the new bearer of this mark, no matter what the two of you decide to do, we will follow you. Alan added with a determined tone. I hate my father for what he did to me, but I respect his loyalty, I don't care if you don't want to be the new king, but let me protect you, help you, and support you. And together it will always be easier to get us out of a bad situation. He then looked at Eric, he already knew that he would agree but he still had to ask. Are you okay with that? Eric's smile widened, he hadn't expected this from Alan but he said enthusiastically. Of course my love, if you want to follow them it's okay, as for me, I will always follow you. Alan looked touched by what he had just said and leaned down to give him a kiss on his forehead. Kevin then said with a big smile. You are sure that you aren't going to regret what you just said. Alan looked at him surprised and Axel laughed, Kevin and him exchanged a knowing look, and Kevin then explained to them, seeing how curious they were getting. First of all, what I'm going to tell you cannot be considered as a secret, let's say it's something that brought us together a lot with Axel. Kevin saw them both frown and he found that they definitely made a really lovely couple together. The first time we went out with Axel we ran into a dungeon, and we realized that not only did it make us earn a lot of money, but it also brought us a lot of other benefits. Thanks to my system, I can find boxes that could have stayed unnoticed, and each time inside these boxes we have discovered weapons or items that were more or less powerful depending on the level of the box. Once you wear these items or weapons, their stats are added to yours. It's also the fastest way we've found to get me to level up quickly. He then looked at Alan and said. The necklace you tried on didn't come from Tony's shop but from one of the boxes found in a dungeon. Alan then exclaimed. What the hell Axel, dungeons are dangerous, what if something happened to him? Axel then said to him. Alan, how can you say that? You are one of the few who know my true level of power. You really believe that I would put his life in danger if I was not 200% sure that I could protect him. Eric seeing that Alan looked tense, tried to distract his man's attention by asking Kevin. Why are you telling us this though? Kevin scratched the back of his head and he said, avoiding to mention that he had been hypnotized by an unknown force of course. Well this afternoon we ran into a dungeon with a purple vortex, the system warned us that we needed at least two other powerful people with us to be able to get into it. With Axel we wanted to invite you to come with us, and we will also share the rewards that the system will give us with you. So, are you interested? Eric immediately exclaimed super excited. Too awesome, my love. He fell silent immediately when he saw Alan's expression, Alan gave him a warning look that was best not to ignore, so he said quickly to appease his man. All in all, I think it's better if Axel talks about it with Alan. He then looked at Kevin and said. How about you show me the room that you modified for your training, let's them talk, okay? Kevin looked at Axel who nodded so he motioned for Eric to follow him and they let their men come to an agreement between them. When they arrived in the bedroom, which was now equipped with all the essentials to build muscle, Kevin pulled out the axes they had just bought from Tony and handed them to Eric who looked paralyzed. Kevin then said to him. 
I chose them myself for you, take them. Chapter 78 Do you have already done it or not yet? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Eric finally picked them up not quite knowing how to react, he had never owned good weapons, as they were rare and expensive. The Sun Sect instructors always kept the best weapons for themselves or for their favorite students, but Eric wasn't one of those lucky students, at least, he wasn't one of them. Now he felt like he had hit the jackpot, first because Axel had chosen him to be his student and then thanks to Kevin's knowledge, he knew that he was finally going to get really, really strong. He still found it hard to believe this was real, Kevin was a super assassin with incredible abilities and he was also the bearer of the pentagram mark. A super assassin and the future best mage of their world, and this man was his friend and he was ready to teach him, who in his right mind would refuse this opportunity. Plus, Alan seemed determined to protect Kevin, so obviously, his life was going to change dramatically from now on. But he wasn't scared, on the contrary he was really excited, his instinct told him that it was for the best. Life in a sect wasn't all that exhilarating, the only thing he loved here was Alan, the rest didn't matter and most of all he dreamed of traveling across the continent and maybe even beyond. When he took the weapons in his hands he immediately felt their powers and Kevin smiled when he saw the expression of surprise on his face, Eric said to him. Damn Kevin, I don't know how much they have cost you but I probably don't have enough money to pay you back. Kevin looked at him with a gentle smile and said. It's a gift Eric, and besides, I haven't finished yet what I wanted to give you. In your opinion, how long are they going to argue? Eric laughed feeling a little embarrassed. Alan is very stubborn, I think it will take Axel a while to convince him, but I'm sure that Axel wouldn't put your life in danger so he must have the right arguments to reassure Alan. Kevin nodded. He told me that he had already been inside a dungeon with a purple vortex, and with the help of the both of you there would be no problem. He also said that we just needed to find you some good weapons to boost your stats to the maximum and it should be fine, by the way it reminds me, do you want me to try to see your stats? Eric answered him without hesitation. Of course Kevin. Wow, this is just too cool. Kevin could see that Eric was really excited by all of this, and he was glad that he had accepted it so well. He then told him, before activating his perception skill. Put down the axes, I want to see your stats without the weapons. Eric obediently put down the axes and he was eager to know if Kevin could see his stats or not. Stats, name. Eric Race. Human level 56 class. Fighter, warrior, EXP. 11890-26800 strength. 115 agility. 105 stamina. 112 chakra. 2240-2240 perception. 135 HP. 2400-2400, equipped items, none Kevin was amazed and delighted, he could finally see the stats of one of his friends, and Eric's stats were very good, he told him everything and he also gave him the stats of the axes and the scabbard he had found for him and that he was going to modify. Eric didn't know if his stats were good or not, but with the addition of the stats from the weapons that Kevin had found for him, they would be for sure. He saw Kevin pull out the scabbard and some leather straps, as well as some tinkering material, and in less than 10 minutes, he had designed a double scabbard for him so that he could carry his axes on his back at all times. Eric hissed really impressed, and he tried it with the axes right away. He then felt a drastic change in his whole body, he was lighter and it was like he also had become much stronger than before, that feeling was truly amazing and very enjoyable. He chose to test his new strength on the equipment near him, and to his surprise, when he moved the machines he didn't even feel their weight it was as if they were as light as a feather. He immediately asked Kevin. The change in my stats isn't permanent is it? It's only when I carry the axes with me. Kevin nodded. Yes, it's only when you are carrying them. Kevin looked again at his stats and his strength points had been increased by 290, his agility points by 140, and his stamina points by 35, it was a very good start. He suddenly said to Eric. Do you mind if I make mine too, 
in addition to my daggers, I decided to also wear short swords, on the one hand it increases my stats considerably, and on the other hand short swords are more useful when I need to behead monsters. Eric was a little surprised by his detached tone, as if beheading monsters was something completely normal. Then he remembered that he had been an assassin in his past life and that he had probably killed a lot of people, which is why he probably didn't care about killing monsters. Well, it was in his past life, he wasn't an assassin anymore so it was fine, he said smiling at him. Go ahead, go ahead, don't mind me. Eric got curious and he asked him. Could you tell me your stats afterwards? Kevin laughed and said. Of course. Kevin only needed a few more minutes to make a double scabbard for his short swords and then he took them from his magic bag and wore them with his new ready.made double scabbard. He chose to look at his own stats fully equipped with all his weapons and items, and when he was finally ready he opened the holographic screen of his system and focus on the stats menu. Stats, Name Kevin Race Human Level 25 Class Mage EXP 1655-5000 Strength 30 plus 300 Agility 30 plus 175 Stamina 31 plus 115 Soul Force 1 162 slash 1 162, 232 plus 930, Perception 56 plus 25 HP 550 slash 550 points available to distribute 15 Physical Damage Reduction 15% Magic Damage Reduction 30% Equipped Items, Necklace High grade ring. High grade short sword. Medium grade times two dagger. Medium grade necklace. Medium grade bracelet. Medium grade hand wraps. Medium grade times two breastplate. Medium grade scabbard. Medium grade dagger. Low grade ring. Low grade knee pads. Low grade Kevin had just remembered that he hadn't yet distributed his points earned by killing the dungeon boss, and as usual he put everything in his perception points which increased to 71. When he gave his stats to Eric, he hissed again in admiration. Kevin you are really exceptional, no wonder Axel is crazy about you. By the way, do you have already done it or not yet? Kevin looked at him speechless, was that really a question that could be asked, but after all, Friends surely shared this kind of stuff with each other, so he decided to be honest. No, not yet, but I told him that I was ready to go further in our relationship, so I think tonight will be our first night. Eric laughed and he took out a small pot from his magic bag, he handed it to him. Here, it's an ointment that Alan has created, it's made with magical herbs, and let's just say that if you put this ointment you know where, it will be much easier for Axel to get in and for you it will take almost all the pain away. Dot believe me, as it's your first time to make love, by using this, it's going to be a magical night. Kevin took it without hesitating, considering the size of Axel's member, if this ointment could help them for their first time he wouldn't say no, and he didn't forget to thank Eric warmly for that. After this little interlude, and as their men still hadn't made an appearance, Kevin decided to show Eric a few simple movements so he could start practicing with his axes. Space was really limited in this room but Kevin explained to Eric that it was not bad because he had to be able to fight anywhere, and adapt to any situation even if he was in a tiny place. Kevin knew that Eric had that kind of potential, but the latter was not yet aware of it. Eric was like a rough jewel that he had to take the time to polish so that he could show his full potential. Kevin then began by explaining to him where the center of gravity of the axes was, and how to hold them and strike with them to be able to use all their powers. Chapter 79 First Night Part 1 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Kevin then showed him how to parry and disarm an opponent, and after half an hour of practice, Axel and Alan finally appeared and Alan immediately motioned for Eric to follow him. The evening seemed over. Eric thanked Kevin for all his advice and hurried over to join the only man who mattered to him. After putting his new weapons in his magic bag, he threw himself into Alan's arms and kissed him passionately, 
it was time to go and practice a whole different sport and when he saw the look full of lust that Alan was giving him he knew they were on the same page. Eric didn't have time to ask how their discussion had ended because Alan bluntly threw him over his shoulder like a bag of potatoes and after nodding to Axel and Kevin he disappeared with a surprising speed that left Kevin completely speechless. Dot however, the smile of the hunter who was going to devour his prey that had appeared on Alan's face had not escaped him, Eric would probably spend the rest of this night satisfying his man's desires. He turned to Axel and asked. So, how did it go? Axel who had been a little surprised by Alan's behavior recovered and said to him. I managed to convince him, they are coming with us tomorrow, we will leave at 6.30 a.m. Axel then asked him because Alan wanted to know what he was going to do about this matter. Babe, what did you plan to do about the queen? Kevin looked at him wondering why he was asking him this kind of question, but he said without hesitation. I'm going to rescue her of course. Same if she isn't my true mother, I owe her for this new body. But, I won't tell her who I am, after all, her son died in that alley. I could never be him and I don't want to. I love our peaceful life. Believe me, I got hunted down because of politics in my world, I won't make the same mistake twice. After saving her and her sister, we will let Alan's family take care of them and I will disappear without anyone noticing. Axel asked him again. How are you going to do it? Kevin had nothing to hide from him so he told him. I will take advantage of the annual capitals tournament. I don't have enough information yet to tell you more on how I will do it, but don't worry though, I will tell you everything when I will have gotten the information I need. Axel smiled at him and said. Rescuing the queen and her sister was one of Alan's conditions to come with us tomorrow. Kevin asked him then. One of the conditions. Axel coughed a little embarrassed but Alan was uncompromising on certain points. Considering your past he asked me what you were planning to do, he suspected that we would not stay at the Sun sect for a long time, and as he told you already, he said that he wanted to accompany us to protect you and of course Eric would stay with him. Kevin shrugged, he had guessed that already, what he didn't understand was why Axel looked so embarrassed. So, he looked at him raising an eyebrow to make him understand that he was still waiting and Axel after having passed one of his hands on his face finally confessed to him. It was frankly very embarrassing. So, he gave me a lecture about taking good care of you and that I will be responsible for you well. Being. He also told me that if I break your heart he will tear my guts out. Kevin then burst out laughing, he really hadn't expected this, and Axel said to him. Babe, it's not funny, isn't he supposed to be my friend? Anyway, I told him that we had already talked about it together and that we have planned to get a promise of engagement at the annual capitals tournament. Kevin came to snuggle up in his arms and he confessed to him. Me too, I had a really awkward moment with Eric, do you want to know what it was? Axel lifted his chin and kissed him tenderly before saying curiously to him. Tell me babe. Kevin then took a small pot out of his jogger's pants pocket and showed it to Axel. Do you know what it is? Axel took it and opened it but he didn't recognize this smell so he said honestly. No idea. Kevin wasn't expecting that, he was sure Axel must have known about this kind of product so he said blushing. Alan has created it for Eric on purpose, it's made from magical herbs and it's kind of. It's. Damn, it's a lubricant. Axel opened wide his eyes in amazement, he didn't think Eric would discuss these things with Kevin, so this was his awkward moment with him. Well, he wouldn't tell Kevin, but Alan had also given him a bag of magical herbs to put in their hot spring water. He had told him that it would help Kevin not to have too much body aches the next morning and that the marks he would make on his body would almost disappear entirely. Alan had also lectured him on the hickeys he had done on Kevin's neck and he had to explain to him why he had done that. Then, Axel's smile widened and he told him in a very seductive voice. What if we go test it right now? We're finally alone. And I really, really, really want you babe. Kevin felt his heart race and he saw Axel's blue deep eyes grow darker and darker. If his heart was betraying his desire for him, Axel's eyes acted like a barometer and he knew that right now, as Axel had just told him, 
he really wanted him. He put his arms around his neck and began to kiss him passionately while pressing himself against him. Axel, who had just received the signal he wanted, put the small pot in his pants pocket and put his hands on Kevin's buttocks to lift him up and position him against his erection which was already starting to ache. Kevin then wrapped his legs around Axel's waist and he began to rub against his erection, waves of pleasure overwhelmed him and he moaned as he continued to kiss him. Axel wasted no more time and led them straight to their room. After placing Kevin delicately on the bed, he undressed him entirely with his hands shaking with excitement and then once he was fully naked he undressed quickly too, not forgetting to put this little magic pot on their nightstand. Axel positioned himself on top of Kevin and asked him just to be absolutely sure. Babe, are you sure, because once we will start I won't stop no matter what. Kevin put his hands behind his neck and said. Just shut up and fuck me Axel. Axel after hearing that from Kevin's mouth felt his erection growing even bigger and then he said to him with his predator smile. Don't worry babe, I'm going to fuck you until you ask me for mercy. Kevin didn't have time to answer him that Axel had already taken possession of his mouth, his tongue slipping through easily between his lips to go and play a frantic dance with his. Kevin tensed a bit when Axel positioned his legs on his shoulders exposing the part of his body that would soon be ravaged by the monster that was waiting patiently between his legs. Just to think about it, Kevin tensed even more, and this obviously didn't escape to Axel. Axel stopped kissing him and he whispered in his ear. Relax babe, I promise you'll feel good, trust me. Kevin wasn't a coward and he had already given his word to Axel so he wouldn't back down but he just wanted to yell at him, trust me. Trust me. It's not you who is going to get your asshole ravaged by a huge erect member. Luckily he held back in time, he took a deep breath and tried to relax, Axel seeing that he was finally relaxing a bit, took the opportunity to begin his exploration, first he needed to distract Kevin's attention. So, he started to play with his nipples, while sucking one and nibbling it, he rubbed and pinched the other one with his hand, and when he heard Kevin's moans of pleasure, he discreetly took the pot that was on the nightstand and once he had managed to open it, he decided to apply it to him first. His member was more than ready to penetrate Kevin but he was going to have to take it upon himself as he didn't want it to go wrong for Kevin's first time. He then put a good dose of this ointment on his fingers and after that his member was well lubricated, he stopped playing with Kevin's nipples and he rested his forehead against his. Chapter 80 First Night Part 2, NSFW, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Axel wanted to see his expression when he would first touch him in this place that he coveted so much. He could see that Kevin was about to complain so he quickly applied a large amount of this ointment on his asshole and he thrust it inside his first finger. Dot oddly enough he didn't feel too much resistance and other than a little grimace from Kevin he seemed to be taking it pretty well. He started thrusting his finger back and forth inside his asshole and Kevin then grabbed his shoulders with his hands and bit his lower lip which was the sexiest thing he had ever seen him doing. Axel felt that his patience wouldn't last very long, so he thrusted his second finger inside which made Kevin swear and he felt his fingers tighten on his shoulders, he then asked him worried. Babe, is that okay? Kevin wasn't sure how to answer his question. This feeling of being penetrated by his fingers was just too weird, and although it was a bit painful at first, after a few back and forth thrusts, the pain would go away to be replaced by an immense pleasure especially when he touched him in a specific place. Axel who was about to withdraw his fingers because he didn't want to hurt Kevin finally heard him said. Axel, damn. Right there. Yes, just there, HAA. This is so good. Axel, who hadn't expected this feel relieved and delighted. He took great pleasure in satisfying his man especially since now he knew where to go to give him a maximum of pleasure. He said to him after kissing him fiercely. Kev, you're driving me crazy babe, I want you so badly. Kevin then said to him. What are you waiting for? Make me yours then. Axel. Axel shook his head and answered him while playing with his tongue with the lobe of his ear. Not yet babe, you are too tight, you have to open up more for me. Axel then bit his earlobe and he thrusted a third finger inside him, 
a moan of pain escaped Kevin but it was quickly replaced by moans of pleasure because Axel kept teasing this spot that gave him so much pleasure. Axel couldn't hold back anymore, Kevin kept repeating his name between two moans and his member was about to explode, it was really getting painful. Axel then said to him because he wanted to look him in the eyes when he would penetrate him for the first time, he wanted to keep the memory of that night in his mind forever. Babe. You are ready now, it will be more painful than with my fingers, but bear with it okay, I promise that it won't last long and that afterwards you will feel even better than now. He saw Kevin bite his lower lip again and he withdrew his fingers, he finally took his member in his hand and positioned it in front of the entrance to his asshole, he rubbed it against his walls and as he wasn't feeling any resistance he began to penetrate him. He couldn't believe that he was finally penetrating him, but he was so big that only half of his member was inside. He gave Kevin the time to adjust, and still watching him, he started to move and he used more and more powerful thrusts to put his full length inside him. Once he was fully inside Kevin, a moan of pure happiness escaped him and he saw that a tear had run down his cheek. He licked it with his tongue as he continued to penetrate Kevin again and again, he couldn't hold back anymore, and when he was done licking his tear he kissed his eyes and whispered in his ear. You are mine now, no one else will ever touch you, I will be the only one. Kevin wanted to yell at him to come out, he was so huge that the pain was almost unbearable but he chose to believe in Axel's words and he tried to relax. Axel had told him he would soon feel even better than with his fingers, so he better be right, because otherwise he would never let him do it again, or he would reverse their roles and be the one in top. When Axel felt Kevin's walls were stopping to try to push him away he was finally able to reach again that spot that gave him the most pleasure. Kevin felt the difference too, and although it was still a little painful, he felt that intense pleasure again spreading through his body, but this time it was even more intense and it was so much better than everything else Axel had done to him. Kevin didn't even know what he was saying anymore, he was aware of begging Axel to continue penetrating him and he also had changed a position and his legs was now wrapped around Axel's waist. With his hands he had guided Axel's head towards one of his nipples without any shame and he was already about to come. But he didn't want to come so early so he focused on other thing and help Axel to go even deeper inside him, the more he could get of that intense feeling of pleasure the better it would be. Axel who had only one desire, was that Kevin have an unforgettable moment for their first night, hastened to carry out all his whims. They both lost track of the time as they were pleasuring each other like there would be no tomorrow. When Kevin told him that he was about to come he further accelerated the pace of his thrusts to give him the maximum of pleasure. And when he finally ejaculated, Axel immediately joined him after just few more thrusts and he stayed inside Kevin for a while to enjoy this moment with him. Kevin finally pushed him aside and he didn't even dare to look at what his body looked like, he had felt Axel give him hickeys all over his chest, but he was too immersed in his own pleasure to care about it, and now he felt that the semen of Axel was leaking between his legs. He looked at Axel and said in a pitiful tone. Axel, that was too good, but now it hurts like hell, and... I can hardly move. Kevin took his hand and put it on his thigh where he felt his semen was flowing, he said a little embarrassed. Help me please, that isn't a very pleasant feeling. 